From all of us at In Grace, we would like to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. The ocean is spectacular, and God created it. Welcome to Exploring God's Ocean. Buried beneath the waves of the Florida Keys, the hidden home of fearless ocean wanderers. Dive into these strange surroundings where creatures of all shapes and sizes glide gracefully overhead, only to disappear with a sudden burst of speed. The landscape changes as the dark waters are illuminated by the moon and the rare bioluminescent creatures that make this world their home. Every scale, fin, and color a testimony to the genius of God. Join us under the sea on an adventure of a lifetime as we explore God's ocean with Jim Scudder Jr. Hi, I'm Jim Scudder Jr. I grew up around water, loving the ocean. I also grew up believing that God created the heavens and the earth. But every time we watch a program that features the oceans, we're told that we came from the oceans and this was millions and millions of years ago, millions of years of evolution. Well, I know that that doesn't fit with the Bible. I also know how amazing the oceans are and how amazing the creatures are. So I wanted to find out more about the ocean and we are going to be talking to a creationist who is a marine biologist. He has a PhD in marine biology. His name is Robert Carter. And he and I are going to explore God's amazing oceans. And we're gonna bring that to you and show you how important the oceans are to us, how important the oceans are to God. I hope that you can be open-minded enough to say, okay, let's look at the evidence and let's see if the Bible fits the evidence. And that's exactly what we're gonna to do today on Exploring God's Ocean. Ever since I was a boy, I've been fascinated with God's creation. I'm traveling the planet to tell His story about His world. I'm Jim Scudder Jr. Come with me on another exciting adventure in grace. All right, we're in Key Largo. Key Largo. And uh, we're gonna look at this amazing thing called the underwater world. And we're gonna do it a little differently, Dr. Carter, because uh, most of the underwater shows you'll see, and they're beautiful, incredible, but they're done from a evolutionary viewpoint. Yeah, almost all of them. Almost like the sea is where we came from. Yeah. And we have a very different view, a biblical view, and that is that God created in six days. God spoke and He created, and we're going to find some pretty amazing things. As a preacher, I get to preach about the past, the present, the future. The future is glorious. God is remaking the heavens and the earth, and you know, it says, your eye has not seen nor ear heard the things that God has in store for those that love Him. And if we would love to live in these types of worlds that are so beautiful, so different than ours, and what is it gonna be like for eternity as God allows us perhaps to explore the far reaches of His creation? It is simply amazing to consider all the different types of fishes that God made. Some are huge, some not. Some are bold, some sneaky. Some swim together in large schools while others live a solitary existence. Some fish eat algae, some eat coral, some eat other fish. Some are stunningly beautiful and others just as plain as could be. When we consider all the different fish God made, how can we do anything other than praise Him for what He has done? What we're gonna do today is bring it back to right here and we're gonna plan our day. We need to get full face mask certified. So we're gonna go get training and then we're gonna be going out on a boat that's based in, I guess it's kind of a touristy area there, yeah. uh, going out with a big boat and go out to Molasses, which is where? Right here. Molasses Reef is kind of the major 
epicenter of the reefs right here in Key Largo. You have a ton of boats going out there. A ton, ton of boats and because it's, a pretty, it's right, it's so right there. It's a pretty big reef. But we're going to go there more just for the training, but we're also going to see some things. Yes. I think we'll be able to see some, some corals. I'm expecting we're going to see a lot of soft corals, mm -hmm. a lot of things waving in the breeze. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be some hard corals and there'll be some big colonies there. Okay. Uh, look for you know jellyfish in the water. Look for little teeny fishes. Everyone always focuses on the big things, mm -hmm. but the little things in the ocean. There's a lot more of them, and there's a lot more diversity, and they're weird and usually really interesting. So let's look for tiny things and see if we can find something unusual. Okay, that should be great too. Are you ready for an adventure? I am ready. <laughs> let's go diving. Robert, we're on our way to learn how to put a full face mask yes. on for diving. I've always wondered about it. The upside is you get to talk underwater. I'm very good at breathing underwater. I'm, I'm going to lose all my air because I'm going to be talking the whole time. <laughs> After driving through the beautiful heart of Key Largo, we made it to a popular dive shop. And here we met our instructor who was going to teach us all about the full face mask. We signed some papers, probably signing our life away, and then we headed to a local pool where we would officially start our training. We prepped our dive tanks, we checked our respirators and the masks, and it was finally time to get into the water. I need coffee, me, Ralph. Big 10 corner, I hear you before it's cleared. What was your impression of the full face mask? I loved it. Once I got the hang of it, that was really fun. Well, what this is going to allow us to do is communicate underwater. Yes. Which is the whole point of this TV show is uh, you're going to show me uh, some of the stuff that's out here in the Keys. And we're going to try to talk through these things. But it's also kind of nice because you don't have to have something in your mouth. It kind of feels a lot more natural. I really like it. And I like to feel the vision, too. Yeah. Coming up. An adventure under the sea. Well, there's shark we got here. Now this is awesome. We just got into a huge school of yellowtail. We've got a more a eel sighting. They are scary looking animals. They have huge teeth and they're beautiful green. If you're enjoying today's exciting In Grace episode, you're absolutely gonna love all of our Creation Adventure series. Make an investment in grace today so more will hear about our Creator, Jesus. Not only will your gift be doubled right now, but you'll also be able to pick from one of our top Creation series. Help more people hear about the Lord and learn more about God's amazing creation when you contact me right now. Call 800-78-GRACE or go to ingrace.tv right now. Give to InGrace's mission and pick one of our top four creation adventures. And right now, your gift will be doubled. This would make a great Christmas gift. Contact InGrace today. The time finally came for us to put on our gear as we prepare to jump in for the first time. Hey, Diesel. What's up, my parents? It's so beautiful. So our first dive, Alaska's Reef, just a few miles offshore. It's only a 30-minute trip. Now, nurse sharks usually aren't something that you'd get too nervous about. I've, no. I've swam with them, I've seen them, but they actually do attack people 
and it's mostly because people bother them. Yeah, go yank on the tail of this shark that doesn't eat people. <laughs> no, it's still a shark. <laughs> And I also read about the nurse shark and other sharks uh, replace their teeth often. And you'll find some beaches, you'll find a lot of shark's teeth. And uh, I think it was like every seven to 10 days, it would have a whole new row of its first line of teeth. It's a lot of teeth. And so they'll, they'll be able to you know, lose teeth and grow teeth very quickly. And it's because they're eating a lot of things that are hard, bony and those, their teeth are, are getting ripped out. And so that God designed something in there so that they can reproduce those teeth quickly. Yeah. These are gastropods. That is a, an animal that uses a stomach for its foot. Gastropod. The question that every kid wants to ask you right now, how is it that when you pick up one of these shells, usually a bigger one, you can hear the ocean? That's a great question. I hear a very small ocean in this one. Yeah, this one you hear a whoa and the different size cavity will give you a different tone. The same thing happens inside a tuba versus a flute or a pipe organ. It's a very similar principle. In fact, the way they create it, if you see the spiral shape, the animal used to be very, very small. And it would just live in this little thing right here, only this much of it. It doesn't go all the way back. It's only this deep, and that's where the animal is. And as he grows, he turns his house and adds a new edge. Mm. And you can see these lines here. Mm -hmm. those, that's his growth rings, essentially, just similar to a tree. And it's just grow and grow and grow and turn and turn and turn. Getting our full mask certification. But it seemed to go good. We've got a weird swell out here. We're on Molasses Reef, just off Key Largo. And sometimes the tide and the waves are crossed. So the boat, this is a big boat, but we're really rocking. And it's kind of hard to, to always hang on. All the tanks are shifting and some people are getting seasick. So hopefully you're not, but uh, it's amazing to be able to dive with a PhD marine biologist and one that believes in creation on top of it, it's awesome. A pleasure reef and we're going to go down and check it out, see what it's like. It's supposed to be a really pretty ledge along here and a lot of more eels supposed to live here. So we got to see a more eel. Let's see if we can get him to come out. One, two, three, four, five. Jim here. That's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool. We have a strong quail fish, and I think we saw a little one at the left side. I'm trying to eat this coral right here. A little raise. Fish. 
Pleasure Reef lives up to its name. That was really a pleasure. Full of fish. I don't think I've seen so many fish in one place in the Keys. Just fish everywhere. Schools and schools of snapper, yellowtail, mangrove, schoolmaster, just beautiful. And then uh, a lot of sharks, a lot of big eel. They're kind of tucked away a little bit. One guy was kind of getting a little too friendly. So we wanted to kind of back him out a little bit. My thoughts were that it's amazing that a coral that died a while ago can provide so much area for fish to live. Cropper palmata that formed the surface of this reef is not there anymore, but there's more eels and there's grunts and there's snappers and all this stuff living in the structure that the corals made. It's actually still neat, still interesting, still exciting to see it. Sharks are the most feared and often most misunderstood animals in the oceans. They're superbly designed and cruise through the water with almost effortless efficiency. Most people are afraid of them because they're fierce predators, but most sharks are harmless to swimmers in most circumstances. During active feeding periods, nurse sharks can replace all their front row teeth every week or two weeks. This is one reason why shark teeth are so often found on beaches and are an abundant part of the fossil record in many parts of the world. A shark's method of breathing is similar to most fish. They draw water through the mouth, they pass it over the gills, and inject it through gill slits. But unlike most fish, most sharks need to keep swimming in order to breathe. But not nurse sharks. They can often be found lying on the bottom. This nurse shark is covered by pesky remoras. These fish have a modified dorsal fin that acts more like a suction cup, allowing them to stick onto larger fish and get carried along for a free ride. Sharks have a variety of ways to swim efficiently. Some have long upper fins on their tails. This helps drive the back end down and head up as they swim. Hammerhead sharks have a wing on the front of their heads that does the same thing. Typically found offshore, the largest shark in the ocean is the whale shark. Adults typically average between 18 and 32 feet long, but the largest ever seen was a giant 61 and a half feet long. Unlike most shark species, its mouth is located at the front of the head instead of underneath the front of the rostrum. The whale shark's huge mouth can reach up to four feet across, but don't be afraid. This fish's diet consists of zooplankton, krill, jellies, copepods, coral spawn, and small fishes, and they can never swallow a person. One of the least known facts about this beautiful shark is that its throat is very narrow, maybe about the size of a quarter. These gentle giants are testimony to the brilliance of the Creator. Wow, we learned a lot today about God's oceans, and we have a lot more for you. Right before we go today, I want to make sure that you know the God that created the sea that you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that you have put your faith, your trust in the Creator. We were created in the image of God. He loves you so much 
that he sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for you. He is God in the flesh. See, he was born of Mary and he lived among us and he never sinned. God came and lived on this planet. Why? So that he could redeem his creation. We've seen a lot of the beauty and variety of the ocean and amazing creatures that God created, but the most amazing part of creation is you. Jesus loves you, he died for you, he rose again the third day, and if you'll simply believe in him, the Bible says you have eternal life. So many people think, I can be religious enough to go to heaven. The problem with that is, you can't. Our sin separates us from a perfect and holy God, therefore you must receive as a gift, eternal life by trusting Jesus as your only way to heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let me show you a real quick illustration. Let this be you and me, and let this be sin. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Jesus had no sin. It says he was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Did you see that sin separates us from God? We cannot pay for sin ourselves. therefore Jesus paid for it on the cross. And if you'll simply believe in him, you'll have eternal life. My friend, that's not good news, that's great news. And I hope today's program has brought you to a decision to put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you're enjoying today's exciting In Grace episode, you're absolutely gonna love all of our Creation Adventure series. Make an investment in grace today so more will hear about our Creator, Jesus. Not only will your gift be doubled right now, but you'll also be able to pick from one of our top Creation series. Help more people hear about the Lord and learn more about God's amazing creation when you contact me right now. Call 800-78-GRACE or go to ingrace.tv right now. Give to InGrace's mission and pick one of our top four creation adventures. And right now, your gift will be doubled. This would make a great Christmas gift. Contact InGrace today. Next time on Exploring God's Ocean, a plunge into dark waters. We're going to show you God's underwater world at night. It's like we are on a different planet down here. Diving at night is a brand new experience. You definitely want to set your DVR and record every single In Grace episode. Don't miss one of them. You will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's word. In Grace is a viewer-supported ministry. Thank you for your prayers and gifts.